Hello all, I am Dr. Neema Bhatt, Consultant Hematologist, Hemato-Oncologist, Bone Marrow Transplant Physician and Pediatric Oncologist. I am also the Program Director for the BMT Unit at Bhagwan Mahavir Jain Hospitals in Bangalore. Today, as a hematologist, I would like to talk to you about a very important, uh, fairly common blood disorder or condition that is found in India, uh, mainly diagnosed in children, but the awareness about this condition is very minimal in the community. This condition is called thalassemia. So what is thalassemia? So thalassemia is what we call a blood disorder where a person produces blood in adequate quantities, but the quality of the blood is not normal. It is a genetically inherited blood disease and India is called the thalassemia capital of the world, which means maximum number of thalassemia cases get diagnosed in India compared to the rest of the world. So what is this thalassemia? So in our blood, we have three different types of cells, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Thalassemia is a disease of the red blood cells. It is where, because of a genetic defect that is usually acquired from parents, children are not able to produce blood normally. So they do not maintain hemoglobin, which should normally be maintained around 10 or 11 gram per deciliter. In these children, by the age of around six months to seven months, these children do not maintain hemoglobin above four or five grams per deciliter. Blood is extremely important for us to help in carrying oxygen, to help us carry out our daily functions. So imagine a child with less than half of the required hemoglobin. A child is always growing, physically very active, and has to maintain adequate hemoglobin to have adequate growth. So in a child, if this blood is not produced normally, then they go through a lot of problems, be it with regards to growth, development, their brain's growth or development, and various other issues. So it is extremely important. It is the need of the hour to educate and increase awareness in people about this condition called thalassemia. So how do you diagnose this condition called thalassemia? So it is mainly by just doing a simple blood test called complete blood count in a child who is found to be pale. So they do not have the pink color in their lips. They are less active. They may sometimes have large abdomen because of enlargement of liver and spleen and also children not eating adequately, not being very active. So these are the symptoms that parents should look out in their children to suspect this condition called thalassemia. Whenever there is a suspicion for a blood disorder like this, please do not hesitate to contact your pediatrician or a pediatric hematologist so that the appropriate blood tests can be performed. Again, the diagnosis of thalassemia is fairly simple. We can do it just by a simple blood test called complete blood count and another blood test called hemoglobin electrophoresis. Sometimes there may be a need to send a genetic test called beta thalassemia mutation, which will help us uh, better diagnose patients with thalassemia. What is the treatment for thalassemia? So once it is diagnosed in these children, these children require blood regularly. And I mean regularly every month. Sometimes this requirement increases to as often as once every two to three weeks. With giving blood to a patient, it does not come without side effects. So blood transfusion always comes with side effects. What are the side effects of blood transfusion? It can be iron overload, which means increased amount of iron, which iron in the right quantity is good, but too much iron, which comes with blood transfusions, is harmful to organs. It can cause patients to have liver failure, it can cause heart failure, it can cause them to have hormonal abnormalities, it can um, interfere with their growth, so it can, it can have various side effects. These children with thalassemia should receive regular blood transfusions, but also after a certain number of blood transfusions should be monitored for iron overload and should be started on medicines to control the excessive iron. If these things are put in place at the correct uh, time and followed in the right possible way, then Th children with thalassemia can lead a healthy, happy life until they are probably around 10 to 15 years of age. What happens after that? Unfortunately, with growing age, more activity, the requirement for blood goes up. And sometimes these children require blood once every 10 days to two weeks. And with that comes the burden of iron. So what is the treatment? Because giving blood transfusions is only sort of a supportive care and not really considered treatment for thalassemia. What exactly is treatment? The only available treatment that is practically possible in the current setup is bone marrow transplantation. So bone marrow transplantation is done from usually a matched sibling donor or a matched parent by doing HLA typing and finding the best match. If a matched sibling or a matched parent is not available, then 
we can proceed to think of what is called haploidentical transplant, where a 50% match donor, which is usually the parent or sometimes the sibling, can also be used as a donor and this bone marrow transplantation can be performed. With bone marrow transplantation, especially with the mad sibling bone marrow transplantation, the rate of cure of thalassemia is as high as 85 to 90 percent. With haploidentical or 50 percent match, the rate of cure is still high, approximately around 70 to 75 percent. So it is high time, my friends, that we realize about this important condition for which India is considered the capital of the world. Also, a last part I would like to touch upon is, is this disease preventable? Yes, so unlike many blood cancer or blood disorders, thalassemia is a very preventable disease. So what can be done to prevent thalassemia or to prevent a child from being born with thalassemia? Mainly, it is important for parents to identify their children if they have thalassemia trait. So this disease comes only if a child has two genetic traits, one trait coming from the father and one trait coming from the mother, which means both the parents need to have thalassemia trait for the child to be born with thalassemia major. So it is important for you to know if your child even has thalassemia trait or carrier's trait. So mainly remember to make sure that your child has CBC tested or complete blood counts tested at least once in their growing years. And if at all there is any mild anemia detected, you need to consult with a hematologist to see what is the best way to proceed with further testing to see if your child has thalassemia carrier state. If the child, if your child has been found to have thalassemia carrier, or thalassemia trait, then it is very important to educate them about it so that when they choose their life partner in the future, it is important for them to make sure to choose a life partner without this thalassemia trait so that they can prevent from having a child with thalassemia major, which as you see is a serious life-threatening condition if not handled or uh, treated the right way. This is my two cents about thalassemia for today. Please feel free to reach out to Helios Cancer and Hematology Clinics here on KR Road in Jainagar or to Dr. Neema Bhatt Hematology for any further questions relating to thalassemia, its diagnosis, prevention or treatment. Thank you.